I will try and be as direct and honest with you as I possibly can be. You're morally reprehensible, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you smell. You know, you're not even interesting enough to make me sick. Um, do you like to be on the top or the bottom? Katrina Porter. Hello. <laughs> Dang it. You always have a clever intro and I'm just sitting here like, ooh. Hi, Anna Serene. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. Welcome to What Happens. Welcome, everybody. Each episode, Katrina and I talk about a movie that both of us love, but only one of us gets to say anything nice about it. And they're the pro of the episode. And the other person cannot say a single nice thing about it. And they're the con of the episode. Mm. And if they do, the offender has to say something nice about the movie that they hate the most. Mine is the remake of Clash of the Titans. You will know that this rule has been broken because the pro will hit the big red button and you'll hear this sound. I'm in a glass case of emotion! Today I'm the con. Good luck. Katrina? Yeah? This is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's hear it. I'm going to cast a spell on this movie and make it vomit cherries. Which can only mean... God, I hope it can only mean... (laughs) ...that we're talking about Witches of Eastwick that came out in 1987. Boy, this is a great movie. It's we, so good. Every movie we do is beloved. I almost said great. <laughs> we know that that's not true. <laughs> yeah, we love some crap. I want to hear a little bit of things before we get into the synopsis, because I would very much like to drink my drink. Oh, we have something like sad news today. Olivia Newton-John passed away today. Yeah, big old R.I.P. R.I.P. She seemed like such a cool person. She has such a beautiful voice, like an angel. She did. I think her daughter sang too, because you remember the, um, a few years ago it was, uh, there was a competition on, I think, VH1. Oh, yeah. Where it was kids of famous musicians that performed, and I think her daughter was one of them. Something about that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. I All I remember about it was that Kenny Loggins had a really hot son, and I think he's the one that won, and Eddie Money was kind of a prick. Well, that checks out. His daughter. He, because she was like trying to do some creative stuff with this song. And he's like, no, that's not how it goes. Okay, money, sit down. <laughs> I have a disclaimer. <gasps> give it. Um, I'm going to really focus on my notes and uh, give in some trivia. I'm very distracted by what is sitting on my desk. Oh, well, I had a bad day today. <laughs> and because Anna is an angel straight from heaven, she made me a sugar cookie pound cake. And I would try to describe it, but I'm not a poet, and that's what this deserves. <laughs> so I will be eating all through this episode. Well, I'm sorry to take you away from from uh, carbs, because... Oh, come on. I got uh, sugar. Sorry, but I'm going to drink, and you are the pro, so... Okay. Well, one thing I was surprised by... Well, a couple things. There, There's not a ton of trivia about this movie. The other thing I was really surprised by is this was directed by George Miller... No fucking shit. Yeah, of the Mad Max fame. He's Love such. That. He's oh, we're re- doing Fury Road. I know. You're the pro. Yes. Oh, I don't know what I'm. Anyway, let's not even think about that. You know what? I had to give up Thor Ragnarok for that one. John Peters is a producer on this. He was kind of difficult. He was a producer? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. At one point, um, this was written by John Updike. He did the. Oh. Yeah. He wrote the book and then that this was based on. Mm-hmm. And then um, George Miller. Tinkle, tinkled, tinkered, tinkered. <laughs> George Miller tinkled with it a little bit. <laughs> he pissed all over it. <laughs> but he went back to Australia to George Miller's from Australia. He mm-hmm. went back to Australia to get ready for the movie because he didn't want to be around John Peters. Oh yikes! Uh huh. I bet George Miller likes what he likes and doesn't like what he doesn't like and and doesn't want a whole lot of like Terry Gilliam. But probably not as difficult. Well, we'll get to something about George Miller in just a little bit. Yeah. I love some hot goss. I've got some for you. 
John Peters at one point wanted um, aliens to be in the movie because of the success of the movie Aliens. So he actually had someone show up on set in like an alien costume and Jack Nicholson and George Miller were like exit stage left and they're like, absolutely not. Good. Yeah. Because that's dumb. It, it, yeah. The budget was $22 million and in the U.S. it made $63 million. Oh, good. Yeah, this did this did well. And it was nominated for Best Sound and Best Score mm-hmm. at the Oscars. Oh. Yeah, you know who did the score? Yes, I do. I saw. John oh. Williams. Oh, Jay Will. Who's been nominated for like more than 50 Oscars. He sure has. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It, he, it really, really is bananas. He won for Fiddler on the Roof. He won for Jaws. Yes. He won for Star Wars. Yes. He won for Schindler's List. He's won five. I th- I'm missing one. I can't believe he's only won five. Yeah. The highest grossing movie in 1987 was Beverly Hills Cop Du. This was the number ninth highest grossing movie. In 87, right? In 87, yeah. I can't tell, but I think your doggo might be licking his bowels. <laughs> no, he's not. He's l- or licking the air. That could be. This movie is... Great. And it's always, for to me, I'll speak for myself, it's always exciting to go back and watch something that I know I love but I haven't seen in a long time because there's a little bit of apprehension like, <laughs> is this going to be garbage? Have we had that yet? I think, I feel like there's been something we went back and we're like, I don't know. Well, we've we've gone back and forth about 500 times about 16 Candles. I just hate the idea that we don't have any John Hughes movies because we we grew up with John I Hughes know. movies. What this problem with our business model <laughs> <laughs> is that if you're going into it knowing that you're going to have to find things that are extremely wrong with it or even a little bit wrong with it, those things that you've just chosen to ignore <laughs> become big blaring yeah. alarms. So it makes it difficult. So I'm just going to eat my pound cake. I hope you do. I still think we could do 16 Candles because I still think that it would be unique and that it would be the first time that defending a movie would be more difficult than attacking it. No, so going back and watching this and doing my notes, uh, it was I was like, this is great. This movie is great. It's important to, to keep in mind that this was in 1987, which was a long, long, long time ago. I, as far as like, the only movie I can think of that I I went back and watched that I was like, how did I even remotely like this was Children of the Corn. I thought there was something else that we went back and you're like, he's not a good actor. Oh, well, um, Pet Cemetery, He's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's really, that, I guess that's another one. Yeah. Because I love that movie. And going back and watching it, most of the acting is really difficult. The problem is that... It has bad acting, except for the one thing that I find the most difficult to actually watch, and that's Zelda. I know. Well, and the little kid is great, and... Gage? Yeah, what's-his-face is great. Oh, sometimes. Dad is bad off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not apologizing for shit. <laughs> I don't have to apologize to Americans. No. <laughs> What do you want to say about this movie before we uh, talk about it? Yes. This is another one where you just, you have to kind of remind yourself that you're supposed to be taking notes. Oh, I know. Because it's just so incredibly enjoyable. I look forward to saying nice things about it after the synopsis. Well, let's do it. Let's get into it. Play the fucking song. All right. Here we go. Bang, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Let the games begin. You, this movie came out in the 80s, so you know how this movie has to start. With an aerial shot? An aerial shot. Yeah. You know what? That's my first attack. I, I don't like heights. <laughs> <laughs> and this one was so slow moving that it felt like hang gliding. And I've already made peace with myself that that's just something I'm never going to do in my life. Yeah, I don't understand why anyone wants to do that. But to each his own. The only time I liked hang gliding was a mannequin. <laughs> When they were searching for or scouting for the location of this, their two requirements were they wanted a town with a white church and a town with small businesses. And lots of cherries. Lots of cherries. They had a shit ton of cherries. 
We meet Alex, who is played by Cher, and she's making Buddha statues and looking absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, she's she's touching clay, but yeah. she's making these weird statues. Yeah. And then immediately grabs toast to eat without washing her hands. That is fucking disgusting. She's an artist. She has clay on her hands, and then she touches food she's going to eat. Yeah. Gross. She's an artist. And she's gorge. I'm an artist. I wash my hands. I know, but you're a food artist. Cher was originally cast as Jane, oh. who was played by Susan Sarandon. And she was like, no, I want to be Alex. Oh. And so she, so Susan Sarandon didn't actually know that she was, had her, her, her role had been changed to Jane until she got to the set. Huh. I couldn't have pictured Cher as as Jane. That doesn't even make sense. Because she's perfect. I like I like that your pop filter is sticking straight up in the air, and mine's like, it. It's not my fault. I'm just drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really tired. Anyway. <laughs> so here's the thing about George Miller. He was not nice to Cher. What? To which I say, boo. Why? He was like, he, he, he didn't want her in the role. He told her that she was too old. And he would, he would like, he said this before the movie started. He called her like while filming was shooting and was saying like, neither Jack and I, neither one of us think that you're attractive. (gasps) I mean, he said terrible things to her. That's not even to like elicit like a a good reaction or anything. Just to, I don't like that. Well, then we meet um, Soke. Soke. <laughs> who is played by the perfect Michelle Pfeiffer, who has 27 children. Yes, she does. That's too many, and I don't like it. Well, agreed. Mm. I, I agree with you. But at first, I thought that was horrifying yeah. until she said the words zucchini jelly. Y- yeah? Did that make that better for you? No, it made, it, it made, it, it made me move on to like, ooh, something can be grosser. Susan Sarandon, as I mentioned earlier, plays Jane. Mm-hmm. She is a band teacher who's being casually sexually assaulted by the principal. Yeah, Walter, you skeevy fucker. He's gross. I would have broken his wrist. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So they're preparing for some band concert mm-hmm. where Walter, the sexual assaulting principal, starts giving a speech and is blathering on about morality and that checks out. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Also, take a fucking hint. You're putting your audience to sleep. <laughs> oh, thank God a storm comes in. This fucker still won't shut up. <laughs> You're drowning in the river. You're drowning. <laughs> Guess what time it is? Whoa. Girls' night. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about, about the girls' night? I feel great about it. Really? Yeah. Even their snacks and drinks? Yeah, what about them? You know what it says in my notes? What? Cheese Whiz. Defend that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not here to defend Cheese Whiz. And Sookie's like, isn't that strange that we were all thinking, God, I wish he would quit talking, and then a storm came in? <laughs> <laughs> I think that sort of thing all the time, and she's nothing like, happens. She's so. like, isn't that strange? And shares like, big deal, it won't get us on Letterman. That wasn't the original line. Huh. The original line was, big deal, it won't get us on Carson. Why did they change it? Because she hates Johnny Carson. Because she was at a party with him, and she was talking shit about Richard Nixon, and he was being a dick to her about it, and oh. so she's like, fuck him. That was Cher? Yeah, Cher. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't love it. The like- snacks? Yeah. <laughs> there was... A- a vat of pickles. Actually, I'm okay with, you, I was with vats say, of pickles. But, I mean, just as a, as a general, actually, I ate a bunch of pickles today. You and I think that yeah. people should enjoy what they want to enjoy, and that's what they enjoyed. This is a small town. They probably don't have the fancy cheese section in the grocery store. Mm. They have cheese Whiz. You know what they really like is pickles. There's pickles are in a number of of. Probably because it's like a phallic thing, I bet. Now that I think about it, I was eating asparagus today, too. Oh, hey yo. I know. And also a penis. <laughs> God. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> yeah, gross. I didn't. I didn't do that. Just the asparagus and pickles. <laughs> They start talking about the person that they envision being perfect. And they say he's handsome. He has nice eyes. Nice ass. Huge. Huge. (laughs) One thing I like about this scene is I think it does a good job depicting women just hanging out. And women that are like really comfortable with with each other. Can I tell you something as a side note? What? Your candle smells amazing. This, I love this candle. Speaking of things that Anna's given me, this mm. is a lemon pound cake candle. Because we love. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but this this candle is from uh, that gay guy candle company. And I love it so much. Lemon pound cake. It smells great. Yeah, it does. A couple uh, other people that were considered for this movie. Uh, Kim Cattrall was considered for Jane. Oh, weird. I know. I don't understand. No. It's like they've got the, the, the second half of, of Jane, that they're not getting anybody, of the, the former half, the, the mousy right. version of her. I can't imagine Kim Cattrall being mousy. No. Um, and Angelica Houston was considered for Alex. And I don't know if that's because she and Jack Nicholson were still dating. They dated for... Oh, I forgot about that. More than a dozen years on and off. Huh. Yeah. Bill Murray was considered for... No, he. I don't think he was considered. He was cast as the Daryl Van Horn slash Satan. Really? Yeah. Which is weird to me. Daryl Hannah was considered, but she passed for ethical reasons. I don't even know what that means. Daryl. What? I, I don't understand what, what that would be in reference to. I don't know. Does she not like cherries? Pam Greer... Was considered, but of course she didn't get it because, hmm, hmm, what's missing in this movie that (laughs) Pam would have stood out? Um, so I do have something else to point out. What? I have an attack. Okay. It's all white people. (laughs) (laughs) That was a, I just gave that to you. The movie's so white. This movie is so white. I literally don't think that there's a person of color in it. No. No. I don't, I don't recall. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. nope. Later on, Suki tells Alex that a stranger has come to town and bought the Lennox mansion, which must be haunted. But the controversy of him buying it, or of this person buying it, is that it's on the historical registry or something like that. We meet Clyde, who's played by Richard Jenkins. He's like the editor of the town newspaper. And his wife is Felicia, and she's played by Veronica Cartwright. Veronica Cartwright was in Alien. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I there I didn't watch it, but there was a, a brief spinoff series about this movie, and she was in that. About this movie? Correct. But she dies in this movie. Right. So I'm guessing she doesn't play Felicia. In the oh. <laughs> so Felicia is all... She knows something evil has come to town. She's very suspicious of this person who's bought the Lennox mansion. Too bad she's batshit cra- Her delivery is batshit crazy. She only has, she only really has, like, two levels. She's either, like, calm or batshit. Alex learns that the new stranger has bought bought all of her statues and no one can remember his name, which is spooky. (laughs) Spooky. Spooky. It's basically just me. Like, a town of me's. (laughs) I just, they just told me his name. (laughs) George. We, We cut to an orchestra concert where Jane is playing. And some rude fucker is snoring his brains out. Like demonic snoring. Right. And everybody's like, this guy. (laughs) Sookie and Alex start laughing and it felt so much like you and me. (laughs) We would hear that loud ass snoring. And the way to the end of the concert, turn to the people behind us be like, hey, did you hear that snoring? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Sookie says that. He is going to, this, the newcomer is going to do an interview about the mansion, and he asks for Suki directly to do the interview. Suki. And then once his name is said out loud, Suki's ne- necklace breaks, and Felicia goes flying down the stairs. Yeah, she got straight up no mean. She's like, I think I broke my leg. <laughs> oh, Clyde. <laughs> no shit, hun. Did the jagged bone sticking out of your calf clue you in? <laughs> yeah. I think I broke my leg. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. So they say his name is Daryl Van Horn. Yeah. Who is played by Jack Nicholson. So Alex, who's played by Cher, goes on a bike ride by the mansion, and she meets Samuel Samuel Satan. <laughs> So Samuel Samuel Satan bullies her into lunch and talks about his helper's big schlong. He talks about dicks quite a lot with the with all of the females. Yeah, I yeah. Cher looks absolutely gorgeous. She wanted to, and this is serious. She wanted to wear a midriff throughout this entire movie, and they're like, no. What? Why? I know. I know because they because they're haters. So they put her in overalls instead? I mean, you know me. I love overalls. You love an overall. He's blowing smoke up her ass about how women get treated poorly by men. I cannot believe. She She seems like a, a an intelligent person. How is she falling for this shit? I think she's curious, just in general. Uh-huh. And and I don't think she's met anyone like him before. He's he's unusual. He's got... He's got He's charming in, like, a weird way, sort of like, you know, garden gnomes. Samuel Samuel Satan starts squirming around on the bed and makes his interest in her very clear. Very clear? Yeah. Her monologue is hysterical. Is it? Well, okay, except she does, she might use, she might say retired. Retired alert. I know. Um, I didn't put that in my notes. So she tries to take off and he convinces her to to stick around. He says, a woman is a whole. Do you know what that is from? No. I'm going to say his name. You know how to say it. I'm going to say his name wrong and you're going to laugh at me. The French philosopher. Jean-Paul Sartre. He had a book called Being and Nothingness. And that's what that's from. I see. Mm-hmm. A woman is a whole. Thanks, everybody. That's it? Just a woman as a whole? And there's more to it, but I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Romantic. Right. I, I long for the day when some man will tell me I'm a whole. Jack Nicholson, I'm going to say this over and over again. He is such an incredible actor, and he is perfect in this. He could have played it super campy, which would have still been okay, but he, he didn't. I mean, he was just great. He could have played it campy. I will agree with that. And Cher just later said that he was like a really good guy. Speaking of Cher and how perfect she is, I love Susan Sarandon also, but I think she might be a little bit of a shit stirrer in real life. You think? I know. She went on Watch What Happens Live, which you know I love. Cher or Susan Sarandon? Susan Sarandon. And Andy Cohen, because he's a shady bitch, asked her what was the most unlike Cher thing that Cher did on set. <gasps> Oh, my. And Susan Sarandon said she asked to be removed from scenes where she didn't have a lot of lines from. <gasps> and Cher, like, within minutes, was like, do, 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 on her Twitter. She's like, uh, that didn't happen. Ooh. Yeah. But then she's like, I do love Susan. There are three Oscar winners in this movie. Uh, Jack Nicholson has won multiple Oscars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cher. Mm-hmm. One for Moonstruck. Yes. And Susan Sarandon. One for the movie She's the Nun. Last Man Walking. Oh, that one. Yeah. D- Dead Man Walking? Dead Man Walking. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. That was that, a great movie. Ooh, it was a great. That was intense, intense, though. Yeah. Yeah. Is it considered a spoiler if I say it doesn't end well? I'm going to just say a controversial take. The title is a spoiler. <laughs> Okay, but that doesn't have anything to do with this movie. No. (laughs) Richard Jenkins has been nominated for two Oscars, Shape of Water and The Visitor. Huh. Michelle Pfeiffer's been nominated for three Oscars. Dangerous Liaisons. Uh Uh-huh. She was nominated for Fabulous Baker Boys. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she was nominated for Love Field. Oh, my. Did you ever see that? No, are you trying to tell me that she was not nominated for either Grease 2 or Lady Hawk? I swear, the Academy is so prejudiced. It's, it's, it's not a fair world we live in. What can I say? Felicia is in the hospital <laughs> with her probably broken leg. And she is clearly not doing okay. What's wrong? I'm sorry. I just, I had a, I had a moment there where I was remembering Clyde feeding her 
Oh, and like it just makes me want to vomit. Oat oatmeal. I don't know gruel. I mean, it just looked disgusting. Yeah, it did. It really did. I don't like other people. I don't like people feeding people. No. No. Since her fall, she's gotten gotten a bit mean. Yeah. To say the least. And her face is so intense. Every time she would do this one face where her eyeballs were bulging out. Yeah. I could only think of... I'm going to show you a picture. Oh, God. As soon as you see it, you're going to be like, oh, my God. Remember the part in Beetlejuice where he turns into the snake? (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, no. That's what she looks like, right? (laughs) Spot the difference. (laughs) None. (laughs) It's like... um. Pam from the office, like, this, this picture, this picture, they're the same picture. <laughs> you mentioned the office. BJ Novak was recently asked what his, the, his favorite episode of the office is. And he said, this is super controversial, but my favorite episode that I wrote. Do not say Scott's Tots. Scott's Tots. No. Yep. BJ, you're wrong. Mm-mm. In Felicia's defense, she does try to tell Clyde. That something is evil inside of her and goes bonkers when she sees Sookie. Sookie. It's just that she's bonkers always. I mean, she just has such a difficult time. Like, you can't communicate like that. She's Nobody's passionate. ever going to take you seriously if you're if you're always at a, at a 50. <laughs> Samuel Samuel Satan shows up at Jane's house. Mm-hmm. Jane is a bit anxious and she apologizes too much. She does apologize too much. I agree with that. Didn't think about the time, but I agree with that in this moment. She apologizes way too... Oh, wait, shit, that's me. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Message. (laughs) The amount of times that I have apologized for apologizing too much is so high. (laughs) Yep. Jane tells Satan that uh, witches were burned at the mansion. And he goes on about how shitty men are and how they marginalize women. And I'm beginning to see the appeal of this guy. Well, he just says, I mean, he's a con artist. Yeah. Listen, if somebody told me that what I deserved in life was to read and drink wine all day, they'd have me in a second. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. That's why when we bought this house, Ty built a library. <laughs> Samuel Samuel Satan plays a piece, and it's the Capriche 16 on the, the violin. Yeah. Because she plays the cello. She plays the cello, yeah. It's fitting because there were of all these rumors that the, the the composer made a deal with the devil to be as talented as he was. Oh, one of them. Mm-hmm. Was it at the crossroads? <laughs> Jane lightens up a bit and ends up banging Satan against the piano. Samuel, Samuel, Satan. We should probably just call him by his actual name in this because it's going to be real confusing to people. <laughs> Daryl? Daryl. <laughs> oh, Samuel, Satan. Samuel, Daryl. Right. Is... <laughs> He, he says he's a sugar junkie. I was like prepared for you to be like, you know, I was not get it out of your system. No, (laughs) I wasn't going to say anything and I'm still not. Okay. So do I even need to mention the cello catching on fire? It, It silly. It's silly, but it's silly. Well, this is a movie about witches, but it's not a, a movie about, about magic cellos. Boy, she sure changes personalities fast, doesn't she? It's not that Jane's personality changed. It's that she lost her glasses and doesn't have a ponytail anymore. So she's beautiful and outgoing. She's a bitch. She she goes from mousy to bitch in, in two seconds. All she has to do is get like banged on a piano and all of a sudden she has lost all of the niceness that she had before. Not only for like the people surrounding her, but her best friends. She is horrible to them immediately with, for no reason whatsoever. Because she's, she's instantly infatuated with this person and completely territorial of him. Like, I think it's like, she's finally, you know, something, she has something that she perceives as like really good, really special. And up until this point, she didn't really feel like there was anything special about her. And this person has made her think she's everything. But you don't have to like, if you're putting somebody up on a pedestal or putting yourself up on a pedestal, that doesn't mean you have to kick everybody out of the way. Well, I think she regrets it later on. 
Alex and Suki head to Satan's house and they see Jane has had a Hollywood makeover. Satan has now set his eyes on Suki. 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 And Jane doesn't like it one bit. He does not. There were the special effects team were originally supposed to just be involved in the tennis ball way up in the air trick. Uh Uh-huh. But these bitches were so bad at tennis, they had to do a ton of special effects for the scene. They'd have to do that a lot for me, too. I don't think I'm... I I don't really play tennis, but I bet I'm not good. I'm not. (laughs) Shoulder You're like, for example, let me try to move. Pop, 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 pop. I was doing... I was looking at the bruises on my arm. (laughs) My shoulder's like, fuck you, tennis. That's hilarious. Crack. (laughs) The tennis game looks pretty ridiculous. Where he's like, they're... Yeah. Yeah. It's him and Sookie going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not even like looking at one board, right? He's just holding the racket or something. He's just... He's so good at tennis. This is a cartoon. I'm surprised he didn't like put on a glove and put it over the racket and then just leave to go do something and then come back to it like Bugs Bunny style. It starts storming and they run into the house for pool time. Satan starts charming Sookie. Sookie. By saying how amazing it is to be a woman because they can make babies. And now Sookie is hooked because she's a baby factory. She's a fertile myrtle. Yeah, for sure. He says, he says in the chair, like, you know, she says, who are you? He's like, I'm whoever you want me to be. Yeah. If a man said that to me, I would nope out of there in a New York fucking minute. Be like, you are a red flag of a human. There's about 27 red flags that I've seen, bef- like within the first eight minutes of this movie that would have had me noping myself out of there. But this isn't about us. Not everything is about us. What? How dare you? No, this is about Alex and Jane and Suki. Suki. The scene with all of the balloons. Yeah, there's, uh, let's see what I have in my thing. I hate balloons. (laughs) I hate balloons. I know. I hate them so much. I know. It's okay. They're not here right now. They can't hurt you. This was my personal nightmare was just like a wall of balloons. Yeah, I didn't think you'd like that. Oh, God, I hated it so much. It's like I could feel the latex like, like, just that sound of, you know, you know, that sound of, like, balloons rubbing against each other, like, Ooh, rrr, I don't rrr, think rrr, I like rrr, the word latex. And then just, just pop all of a sudden, and you can't see it coming. Well, if you know it's there and you're looking for it, if you could, you can see that he's wearing purple and yellow shoes. Okay. Which is... Because he loves the Lakers. Because he loves the Lakers. I knew it. Yep. God damn it. Yep. I did not look at that. I was too busy being horrified at the balloons. The women start floating, and that's totally normal. Because they're laughing. Because they're giggly. And then later on, they start talking about their deepest fears, which is not going to come back to haunt them at all. (laughs) On his camcorder. On his camcorder. (laughs) He's recording on a gigantic camcorder. Just out of curiosity, if he was recording you. My deepest fear? Yeah. Probably being forgotten. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. So he would have just disappeared in the... (laughs) Oh, that's sad. Just not being remembered. Oh, that's sad. Not being loved. And spiders. <laughs> Mine would have been like open ocean. <laughs> With balloons. <laughs> Mine was, no, in the dark. Because I don't like like sharks and like pesky ocean dwellers. <laughs> oh, and lightning. I don't like lightning either. <laughs> and balloons. And balloons. So basically, if it was like, if I was just floating out, that's what he would do. He would, he would make me in the ocean at night and a lightning storm. And there's just sharks circling me, holding balloons (laughs) and just like threatening to pop them. The (laughs) balloons are riding the lightning bolts like, ha ha. I would, you know what? I I think I I would just die of a heart attack and float to the, the bottom like Jack. Cut to the church and Felicia is being a frateur. Towards the church pew. Which, I'm sorry, what was that word? A frateur. Ooh. It's when you rub against something in a sexual nature without their consent. In the church? I didn't see that bench say okay. You, uh, you, you speak pretty. <laughs> a frateur. You know who doesn't speak pretty? Huh? Felicia. Whores. <laughs> Whores. <laughs> she Whores. Starts, and I'm she like, starts calling okay. everyone whores. That's rude. And talks about dildos and anal intercourse. No, Poor Clyde. She, no, she goes from murder to rape 
to Spanish flies, and to dildos, and then finally anal intercourse. And then has the gall to go outside and go, I have nothing against a good fuck. <laughs> I know. That was <laughs> Excuse me? Felicia. And she molested a bench. A pew. <laughs> a pew pew. She molested a pew pew. Jane is back in band class. Oh my God. And she says, when I count to four, we're going to play the shit out of this music. Here's my only problem with this scene. Oh, I've got a big problem with this scene. Okay. Well, my only problem is why four? Doesn't everyone count to three? I think no, because I think in, in music it would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, well, that's, we don't need to say anything else about okay. that scene. I definitely need to say something because this, oh. is a, this is a trope that I absolutely cannot stand in movies. And I'm completely serious. Whoa. I hate that, uh, like, the trope that, like, a band can't play. It's always, like, in a school and the band can't play. The teacher just, like, just throw the music away. The teacher is like, just just throw everything out. It's fine. And then just like, you know, all you have to do is just like, just play with your heart. And all of a sudden they can play great. Bullshit. Well, the principal comes by the classroom and runs off because Jane isn't submissive anymore. So he's not interested in her. Skeevy Walter. Right. Jane goes to the store and gets slut shamed by the tight ass town folk. I definitely don't like that. But she is going through the store, like eating, like eating out of the jar of pickles, and like wearing sunglasses, and like talking to everybody all crazy. That's not okay. Well, and even worse, the witches learn that Clyde has slut shamed them in the local paper. Yep. Which feels like a big betrayal by Sookie because she works for the paper. Sookie. Sookie. They start eating cherries. Have and another is, cherry. This is clearly causing Felicia some problems. Fucking gross. <laughs> and it really sounded like vomit. It well, looked and sounded like vomit. They had a life-size animatronic Felicia that was just spewing vomit everywhere, and the test audiences didn't like it, so they didn't go with that. The, the problem is it just looks a little too real. I, th- I think I needed something more like Team America, where yeah. it's like like super intense and like actually just looks like fake vomit this is watery and like slimy like watery slimy like actual like vomit yeah. is and it just sounded she's she had the you know and then she's like eat 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 <laughs> that whole thing was insane it was <laughs> fucking bonkers it was bonkers in the best tickle, way tickle possible. diddle diddle felicia figures out that satan is gonna knock the witches up so he can have sons She's like rubbing her. She's this scene is crazy. Can you even imagine if, when they were filming it? Tickle, tickle, diddle, diddle, <laughs> like rubbing her crotch and. I know it made me just pray that I never get bone marrow in my brain. <laughs> pray for that too. <laughs> I didn't know that that was one of my biggest fears. Oh but... God! Add that to my to my I weird know. like ocean lightning shark balloon problem. Clyde needs some quiet time, so he helps Felicia take a long nap. Dopa kills his wife. He should have just gone to the Cheesecake Factory to drink like he did in Step Brothers. I mean, she was crazy. She, she was crazy. She was, she's being real crazy. You could just call, like, a, a professional, probably, yeah? Uh, who are you going to... Who? Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> the witches start fighting, and it creates a literal divide in the ground. And they run off, and they decide to go Satan. And he doesn't handle it well. No, he doesn't. Ghosting the devil is probably not the best plan. He starts with Alex, and she's like, new phone, who dis? And he pulls a Sarah from Labyrinth. He's like, that's not fair. He goes by Sookie's house. Sookie. And that's a no for me, dog. Jane finds out she's pregnant and goes by Satan's house. Yeah. And she sees him watching the home movies. Yeah. (laughs) The camcorder fears it's, it's time to pay the price. Jane gets old for a second. This this is these special effects are worse than Warlock. What? You know it. I like that they just don't even use they use a completely different actress for two seconds. Mm-mm. They didn't even bother putting. They do like old age makeup, kind of for a second on Susan Sarandon. She's like, I don't want that shit on me. So they just get another. It's like the stunt doubles in Spaceballs. So. Jane figures out that Satan is fucking with him. Cut to Alex's house, 
where she wakes up and she's completely covered in snakes. Asshole. When she when Cher filmed this scene and she had to get in the bed with the snakes, she said, which one of these is John Peters, that producer? <gasps> Cher. I know. I wish there was more gossip about why she said that, but maybe he was just obnoxious. Yeah, it sounds like he was a prick. Yeah. He's the one that wanted aliens in the movie. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Next, he fucks with Sookie. Sookie. Who really seems to get the worst out of it. Yeah. She, she's all, shit's all fucked up. She's got, he gave her fucking cold sores. I know, that wasn't what nice. What an asshole. I know, he, I know, that wasn't nice. That and wasn't nice. And he's eating a tamarillo, and those are gross. I don't know what that is. It's like a, it's like if a tomato were sweeter, but the peel was sour. Oh, Right. How okay. does that sound to you? It's no. slimy in the middle because it has those seeds that are just like tomato okay. seeds, but they're like but it's slimy. But there's it's sweet on the inside, but it's really sour and bitter on the outside. Mm-hmm. Like you. They learn they are all pregnant, and Alex goes to talk some sense into Satan, and he lets them know that all he wants is a little affection and someone to do his laundry. Oh, is that what he does? Yes. Really? Yes. He's having to do his own ironing, huh? Yeah. You know why? Because he says, and I quote, small town, not enough Orientals. That's, I, I heard him say, small town, not enough Oreos. Oreos. He would have said that because he was, he was ironing. Yeah. And when you iron, you want a uh, double stuff. And then he's like, I just want attention. I want respect. And like literally stomping around. The witches figure out they're going to have to take him out. This guy. Okay, he, you know. This fucking guy. He expresses his emotions. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, how charming is that? He's a childish man, baby. Well, too bad for him. Payback's a motherfucker, motherfucker. Yeah, it is. They send him out for bagels and ice cream, and they grab the grimoire. (laughs) The grimoire. The grimoire. (laughs) And start fucking with him. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They make that wax voodoo doll? Yeah. With a dick sticking up? Mm-hmm. When Satan is whistling in the ice cream shop, uh, that's actually John Williams. Oh, whistling? Mm-hmm. Huh. So, Jack Nicholson can't whistle. That's an attack. <laughs> also, he orders pistachio ice cream. Gross. <laughs> These ladies don't have good taste in men, but they're pretty good witches. He doesn't have good taste in ice cream. Well... He's Satan. 31 flavors, and he's going for pistachio? Nobody goes for pistachio. So they start poking the shit out of this voodoo doll, which is causing Satan all sorts of problems. The scene where he stumbles into the church is so funny. I want to ask you something. You're all church-going folk. I really want to ask you something. Do you think God knew what he was doing when he created woman? Huh? No shit. I really want to know. And he starts spewing cherries everywhere. Oh, God, more vomit. Ooh, God. That scene is hysterical. Dear God, more vomit. It's so funny. I just, it, it, oh, God. It's just, it's, it's, vo- people, if you haven't seen this movie, it is the most realistic look. It's like, it's like watery and slimy and it has cherry pits in it. It's a distraction. It's gross. That's a crazy take. It was too realistic, so it was distracting. All of my takes are ridiculous. (laughs) That one's silly. That was, it's not great, but it's true. It's, I really, I fucking hate watching people vomit. I do too. I'm not a fan. Satan heads home. The witches run into the library like really fast. And in that scene, you see uh, Jane hit a lamp. Yes. And that was Susan Sarandon accidentally knocked that over. Yeah. So their reaction there, everyone's like, (gasps) And it was, it worked, so they kept it in. They <laughs> just covered it up with pillows. Right. <laughs> He's driving in a car, and the car is still driving, and there's literally nobody there to step on the gas. It's a magic car. Same a magic the, car. Yeah, like in Care Bears. A cloud car. Yeah. Does it do any other magic tricks besides just driving, like, besides just self-driving? Also, when are we going to get self-driving cars? I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Satan looks like I did the morning after recording the Twister episode. <laughs> <laughs> I have, oh, again with these special effects, and that is literally my last note. <laughs> Satan is not taking the breakup well, but he's dead. 
And <laughs> are you just going to just skip right on ahead with how absolutely rid- goddamn ridiculous he looks melting away? <laughs> that was, that was silly. Huh. Yeah. N- no. Oh. Well, that's dumb. Oh. Well, he's dead. 18 months later, they've all had their kiddos who are freaking adorable. Fidel is their babysitter, and he might not be the best babysitter. No shit. Because <laughs> they just kind of wander off. So the, the little kiddos scoot off, and they see Satan up on the TV screen. And they're like, hey, it's daddy. Ha, ha. And the women come in and click them off. Hey, guess what? Whoa. That's the end. It's done. Yes, it's over now. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's over. I didn't get a button push, but I should have. But I should have. I know. I'm gonna start Ooh. being. I had to talk my way out of a couple. Of <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to to talk about this. This movie was really. I was positive I was gonna get a button push. Because it's, this is another one where you you take notes on it and you just start watching the movie and completely forget to take notes. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, God. Jack Nicholson in the church. Jesus Christ. So funny. He's just that good. Yeah. He's a wonderful actor. He is. Really, really is. And uh, is it Veronica Cartwright? Yeah. She is really, really wonderful. She She definitely committed to that role. She was great. I think... um, I love her voice. I think Susan Sarandon was perfect as Jane. Cher, of course, was perfect as Alex. Michelle Pfeiffer was perfect as Sookie. 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 Oh, damn it. I was going to use that that they don't sing as one of my attacks. I'm like, all three of them can sing beautifully. (laughs) Probably, at least for Cher. She didn't want that. She probably didn't want it. it. Yeah, she was nominated for... uh, Silkwood, the year this came out. She was in Silkwood? Yeah. I, was, I don't know if I ever saw it. Yeah, it's intense. She was nominated for Mask. She she was nominated for Mask. Yeah. No kidding. She won for, I think she was nominated for Mask. I know she... Was it Eric Stoltz? I don't know. God, he should have been. He I know good. she was nominated for Silkwood, and then I know she won for Moonstruck. Did Meryl Streep win for Silkwood? Is that I mean, one of her? I can't remember. I just won was she nominated? Oscars. Oh, she. I'm sure she. I'm was. just kidding. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so she. <laughs> well, this is a great movie. I would highly recommend people watch this. Not not always when we when we have these. I just assume that people can't get into it, and that's fine. Some of them are just nostalgic. But we know that they're not great movies. They're not cinematic art. They're just beloved to us. But this is one that I genuinely think that people could pick up. It's not super dated, except for, you know, some of the technology. Yeah, some of the technology, for sure. Uh, Yeah, Meryl Streep was nominated for Silkwood, but she didn't win. I see. Yeah. This movie's wonderful. I wonder what... I mean, Practical Magic is going to come up. I wonder what, what movies about witches people love. Oh, we don't have it on our list. But I really like The Witches. Okay, I was wrong. She was not nominated for Mask. I see. Okay. Just, um, she was nominated. She won for Moonstruck. She was nominated for Silkwood. And she was nominated for uh, Burlesque. Oh. What? (laughs) No, she was not. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No. Boy, that must have been a barren year. (laughs) So you want to hear what people like as witch movies? Yep. Yes, I do. Which witch movie do you mm-hmm. like? Mm-hmm. Well, hey, everyone. You can get a hold of us very, very easily. We are at Split Happens Pod on all of the socials and splithappenspod.com. And that's it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>